Once upon a time, there was a world whereby hospitals did not exist. Pregnancy tests were yet to be invented, and an epidural was a foreign vocabulary. Welcome to the medieval times, also known as the Middle Ages. Despite women facing unique circumstances, they bravely labored to bring children into the world. And because of them, you and I are here. In today's video, we'll be exploring what it was like to give birth during these times. Now let's get into it, it's almost time to push. When a woman found out she was pregnant. Well, as we all know, the process that begets childbirth is having a child to give birth to. In the modern day, women can know if they're pregnant or not almost instantaneously via the sophisticated and expensive pregnancy tests we have today. They can also know this when their baby is only a few weeks old. In medieval times, however, when pregnancy tests were yet to be invented until several centuries later, women would not know they were pregnant till up to five months when they felt the baby's kicks. You might think that discovering you were pregnant was a completely joyous affair, but this was not so. Soon after finding out about the pregnancy, the pregnant mother would write up a will in case things went wrong during childbirth. At the time, childbirth was known as the most dangerous thing a woman could go through. The maternal mortality rate was quite high, as one in three mothers was likely to die during childbirth. When a woman would sew her wedding dress, even before getting married, she understood that it might as well be her burial shroud someday, in case her childbirth went badly. Quite eerie, right? The due day. Now let's get into the actual childbirth process. The pregnant mother, especially if she had an aristocratic background, would retire to a birthing room a month before giving birth. This room would be dark, with soft furnishings, to allow the mother to rest for a while before the baby comes. Honestly, if I was carrying a whole human, I would appreciate this tremendously. Imagine getting a whole room to yourself with cozy furniture. I'd be napping all day. And it would be well deserved because sleep would be a luxury once the baby came. So, the labor pains have set in, and the time has come. What happens? Well, pregnant mothers were allowed to have several midwives with them to help them through the birthing process. These women were mostly older and were known to be of noble character in society. They had to be women of integrity who would not steal anything from the birthing room. It was known that some midwives would steal the baby's afterbirth and use it for witchcraft. And if they were found out, they'd be burned alive. Yikes! Birthing would typically take place in the mother's bedroom, as hospitals weren't a thing in those days. Only midwives were allowed to be with the mother during birth, and men were not allowed at all, including the mother's spouse. So what was he doing during this time? His role was to go door to door around the neighborhood, telling everybody that they were about to have a new addition to their community. Midwives would even hang pictures of a baby's cot or of a woman holding a child on the door of the mother's house to inform people of the birth that was about to happen or already happening. This time would allow the community to prepare for the new baby and offer their support. How childbirth for royal women was like. In the context of royal birth, things would be pretty different. If a baby of royal lineage was about to be born, the announcement was made on public platforms, informing the people of the queen's pregnancy. They were also encouraged to pray for a safe pregnancy and birth for the queen, as the new heir would mean either the success or failure of the monarchy. During childbirth, unlike for a commoner, things were not private for a queen. As she gave birth, her obstetrician would allow it, and people from all over the surrounding community scrambled to come and watch. For sure, they all just wanted to know the gender of the next heir, and if the queen was safe, and not to see any private parts, right? When Marie Antoinette of France was giving birth to her child, she fainted due to the congestion from the people gathered to watch. It's recorded that there was over 200 people present. Well, if I was her, I'd faint too and probably never show my face in public ever again. During these intense moments, the midwives were there to constantly encourage the mother, change linens, keep her comfortable and take care of the baby once they were born. Some would even stay for a few days after to look after the house, the older children if any, and even the husband as the mother recovered and rested. The time after a successful birth was filled with joy, and the new parents were surrounded by love and support from their community. How cute! Medication in Childbirth Unlike the developed world today, childbirth back then was always natural and unmedicated. Epidural who? Seeking pain relief during an excruciating process like childbirth was frowned upon. People believed that pain during childbirth was a justified punishment from God towards all women. If you've studied the Bible, or at least skimmed through it, at the time of the creation of the world, God created the first man and woman and gave them specific instructions to follow. However, they did not follow these instructions and ended up disobeying God. One of the punishments that God gave to women was that she would go through incredible pain during childbirth. 
In medieval times, they believed that this curse was inherited by all women, so pain during childbirth was seen as a justifiable punishment for sin. Well, Queen Elizabeth I was having none of this. This incredible woman had nine children and hated the pains of pregnancy and childbirth. In 1848, as she was giving birth to her sixth child, Leopold, she asked for chloroform, which was one of the latest inventions to help her manage her pain. She was so amazed at the results that she used it during the birth of her last three children. Well, what a legend, what a queen. Since the queen herself was using chloroform, many other mothers sought after it as they gave birth as well. However, it came with some pretty fatal risks. While administering it, it had to be closely monitored as the risk of the mother failing to wake up was high. Apart from chloroform, another pain management technique known as twilight sleep was adopted. This involved giving the mother a mixture of morphine and scopolamine, which would induce a state of amnesia and semi-consciousness. It was possible that using this method, the mother would fail to remember the birth. Queen Elizabeth, at the time Princess Elizabeth, gave birth to her son Andrew in 1960 using this pain management technique. Childbirth Risks in Medieval Times As mentioned earlier, in medieval times the maternal mortality rate was quite high and the childbirth was very risky. So what would happen when things went wrong? The most common issue to arise was postpartum hemorrhage and obstructed labor. Postpartum hemorrhage was excess bleeding that would happen after birth and was often fatal. To prevent this, midwives would administer burgit, a fungus that grows on wheat. This would induce contractions and speed labor. It would also be administered after birth to induce contractions that would prevent hemorrhaging. They would also encourage the mother to breastfeed her baby right after birth. As she breastfed, a hormone called oxytocin would be produced, which created and strengthened the bond between the mother and baby, as well as shrink the uterus to its normal size, thus preventing hemorrhaging. An unconventional and probably not smart method to prevent hemorrhage was known as bloodletting. In this method, hemorrhaging mothers would be cut in an area like her arm and caused more bleeding from there, with the belief that the blood would clot, thus stopping the hemorrhage. I'm no doctor, but I can easily tell that this was not smart at all. In the case of obstructed labor, whereby the baby was positioned inappropriately during childbirth, the midwife would have to anoint her hands with either butter or oil, slip them inside the mother and pull the baby out. This method was not safe at all. Victoria, daughter of Queen Victoria of England, had her son, Wilhelm II, using this method. He ended up having serious nerve damage on his left arm, leaving it paralyzed and significantly shorter than his right. To solve this problem, forceps were invented in the 17th century by the Chamberlain family, which led to the saving of dozens of mothers and babies. However, another problem arose. Mothers began to die several days or weeks after childbirth due to fever. This condition was then known as childbed fever, now known as barrel fever. They thought it was just a fever, but upon more scrutiny, these mothers were dying of infection from poor hygiene. In the 1800s, it seemed as though hygiene was not a priority for many people because housing was a mess and the conditions became more and more unsanitary for mothers to give birth at home. Therefore, they had to give birth at clinics. You would think this would make things better for them, but the mortality rate was staggering. An Austrian doctor known as Ignaz Semmelweis realized that the mortality rate for mothers dying of barrel fever in a student-run clinic was significantly higher than the midwife-run clinic. It's hard to believe, but I kid you not. The students in the clinic would perform autopsies on mothers who died of barrel fever, then proceed without washing their hands to examine pregnant mothers. The infection was being passed on due to the lack of a simple and basic hygienic practice, washing hands. After the students began washing their hands, the mortality rate dropped like it was hot. Lastly, something unfortunate that could go wrong is the death of the mother. If this would happen during childbirth, the midwives would cut the mother open with the hopes that they could save her baby. This is how the cesarean section method of giving birth came about. With all the advances in medicine, with a focus on safety during childbirth for mother and baby, I'm glad that we no longer have to go through what the brave women who came before us in medieval times had to endure. I'm glad that we live in a world whereby mothers can have access to quality healthcare and are given a voice to advocate for themselves and how they desire to bring their children into the world. So, what do you think of the birthing experiences and practices in medieval times? Let us know in the comments, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our channel.